And millions of U.S. students are resuming their loan payments after President Biden's plan to write off billions of dollars of debts was overturned. Joy for some and new graduates in the lowest income backgrounds turned to anguish when the U.S. Supreme Court struck down Biden's initiative this summer. But the administration is helping older graduates, as Owen Faircloth reports. They protested in vain. Students from across the U.S. outside the Supreme Court after it struck down President Biden's order to forgive $430 billion of debt for up to 43 million borrowers. And from October the 1st, repayments have resumed for borrowers who benefited from a three-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. If it's a blow to millions who'd initially celebrated the cancellation of up to $20,000 in debt individually, other measures are underway. I'm keeping my commitment to do what I can to ease the burden of student debt, which fall heaviest, heaviest on black and Latino borrowers. The Biden administration has forgiven around $39 billion in loans for 804,000 graduates. It's aimed at those who've been paying back their loans for up to 25 years, but never received credit due to administrative errors that weren't corrected. But those students who now have to repay their loans are being urged to look carefully at their monthly budgets. Owen Fairclough, CGTN, Washington. Well, the high level of student debt here in the United States means many students have to take on extra work in an effort to make ends meet. Karina Mitchell takes a look at how one young woman is dancing around debt while pursuing a degree. Dancing has always been a passion for this 27-year-old who goes by the stage name Roxy. But her stint as an exotic dancer at a New York City club also serves another purpose. It feels great knowing that once I graduate, I don't have to pay a loan back. We recently caught up with Roxy while she was working out, practicing some of her dance moves. I asked what motivated her to use dancing as a way to pay for nursing school. She revealed that at first she was self-conscious about some of the stigma associated with being an exotic dancer and believes it's not a career for just anyone trying to make some cash. You're dealing with men that are touching you. Not everybody can, you know, deal with that. Um, so I feel like that, you know, the dancing industry is mainly for people that are strong-willed. For Roxy, the allure of dictating when she works and realizing just how lucrative dancing can be was enough to propel her onto the dance floor. Yeah, I think the best night I've ever had was, uh, I want to say, like, three grand. I made that in one night. Her friends are envious she's able to dance around debt. However, she's candid that not every night brings a windfall. She shared if it weren't for taking up this type of dancing, her finances, like so many others paying for college, wouldn't be in such good shape. I feel like I probably would have had to take out another loan or I would have had to at least work two jobs in order to afford school. One financial analyst says he believes a return on investment still makes pursuing a college degree worthwhile for those interested in a traditional degree, but says there are smart ways to minimize costs. People can go to a junior college or a community college for a couple of years, you know, get some of their classes out of the way before transferring to that four-year school. And ultimately, they'll get the, their degree from the four-year school, but they can save some money those first couple of years of more. Roxy says dance is just a stepping stone, not something she'll continue doing full-time after graduating next year fully debt-free, but adds she may not give it up entirely. I still want to help other dancers, like help build, you know, their clientele and uh, teach them how to uh, take dancing um, into like a, a business perspective rather than just dancing at the club. Karina Mitchell, CGTN, New York. For a more in-depth look at the student loan situation, we're joined by Douglas Sloan, who is principal at National Capital Strategy Group and vice president of the Washington, D.C. chapter of the NAACP. Douglas, thanks very much for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, let's let's begin by talking about student loan payments. Who resumes? Who doesn't? Who does this affect? And to what degree do you think that there's been uh, a certain degree of, of uh, I don't know how to, how to exactly phrase it, but pe people in the U.S. were convinced that Biden was going to do something. He pledged that. He made that promise, and it didn't happen. Yeah, it didn't happen because of the Republican Party. 
uh, Biden had moved to erase and forgive student loan debt uh, up to $20,000 and I believe even more for students with Pell Grants uh, for millions of uh, people that have graduated from college and some people that were still in school facing heavy student loan debt and effort by uh, six red Republican-led states and a challenge in a conservative Supreme Court uh, put that away, did away with all that. So, uh, you know, Biden is doing everything he can. Uh, he, he's now come up with a safe plan to try to uh, provide an on-ramp and ease people back into their student loans. He's going to try to work through his authority over the U.S. Department of Education to see if there's another way or method he could forgive this. Biden is doing everything within his power to try to help out Americans uh, in this post-COVID society that we're still dealing with. We're still dealing with uh, incredibly high gas prices, food prices, housing that are all a result of COVID that we still are struggling to come out of. So Biden is doing everything he can, but he is being thwarted by the Republican Party. And this will have consequences in next year's presidential election. Uh, it, it, um Douglas, I want to also kind of put things in perspective for an international audience. When I went to school, I paid a fraction of what my kids paid when they had to go to school. So when I hear people say, oh, well, I paid my student loan when I got out, my student loan was about, you know, it was very, very small. So explain what this is doing to uh, an, an average breadwinner. You get out and you're saddled with $100,000 in debt because you went to school for four years. How do you pay that off when you're a young person? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm at a loss. Uh, I saw a study that said it takes about 15 and a half years for the average person to pay off their uh, student loans. I, I believe that's just college and not grad school. I was uh, reading up on this and I saw some astronomical numbers of people that are saddled uh, with student let debt, $172,000. Like me, like you, that blows my mind. My student debt wasn't that much, although it did take me a while to pay it off, and I finally got through it. But that doesn't mean that I, I don't want students and people coming behind me uh, to be saddled with that same debt and even more. So uh, I, I really am hopeful that uh, Joe Biden and the Democrats are going to be able to get back into office, that uh, perhaps we can take control of the House and the Senate, and maybe we can, uh, rather, maybe the Democrats can find a way to erase some of the student debt, especially in this post-COVID economy when Americans are facing so many economic challenges. It's just unbelievable uh, that we are not all on the same page and trying to help each other get through this tough time. Uh Douglas, if you can't see it, but on our screen right now, there's a, a graphic that says some uh, 65 million borrowers owe something like $1.6 trillion. Uh, the, those who say, look, it's time for people to step up and pay their student loans, they look at that number and they say, wow, this could really take a, uh, a chunk, not a huge chunk, a chunk out of the national debt. Do you understand that side of the argument? I understand that side of the argument. However, you also have to understand uh, in terms of how our economy works, um, and yeah, I'm not saying you don't understand this, but just for our viewers, uh, when people have to resume uh, these student debt loan or student loan payments, uh, that's going to hit our economy. That's going to affect uh, discretionary spending uh, to the tune of uh, maybe 0.1 percent of the U.S. economic output. Uh, for 2023 and up to 0.3% in 2024. That's going to affect, negatively affect our economy. So we have to be really careful in how uh, we get through this. Uh, we're still in a very fragile state coming off of COVID, right. and we still haven't quite been able to, to right the ship. So uh, I think forgiving some of these student loans and getting some of that spending, some of that money, discretionary spending, into our economy to generate uh, uh, revenue for our businesses would be in our best interest. Do you see any, any signs out there that the two sides are going to be able to come together and try and work out some some kind of method moving forward to change the way uh, people do go to college because there has been this argument hey you know maybe not it's college isn't for everybody you could go to a trade school you could do something else but a lot of people really want that four-year degree 
Yeah, yeah. And, and you and I know that in our fields that you do need a four-year degree, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with going to trade schools, with learning a trade, like being an electrician or a plumber or auto mechanic. You can make a lot of good money as an electrician. I, uh, with my work with the NAACP, I'm working with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, and uh, after you go through their training program, uh, which is some on-the-job training, after I believe the first uh, six months, you're looking at a six-figure income after you finish that training program, which is amazing to me. I, maybe I should have gone to become an electrician. But uh, you can make money in other trades. There are still ways for people to earn a decent, honest, solid paycheck in this country without having to get a four-year degree. And yes, uh, and, and, and something else that I should add on to uh, when we're talking about uh, other foreign countries, there are some countries that allow for free college. Uh, France, Austria, Germany, Greece, they all have free college. Mm -hmm. So that's something else we should look at regarding the exorbitant rates of uh, college education these days in the United States of America. Okay, our good friend Douglas Sloan, thanks very much. I certainly appreciate you putting that into focus for us. Thank you. Thank you.